G'day, my name is John and this is the next in a series of videos that I'm doing on these uh, little Chinese diesel air heaters and the subject of today's video is the air intake for the combustion chamber which is this here. So the air is sucked in through here into a closed combustion chamber here and then the exhaust comes out here. Now because this is closed and I've said this in the past, if we restrict the exhaust or we restrict the air intake coming into here we will have very poor combustion, we'll have smoke and we'll have soot build up. Now just going back here from school that if we look at we get a hydrocarbon or fuel we burn it with oxygen we have energy produced plus carbon dioxide plus water vapor. Now this is fairly impossible to achieve except like the human body. The human body can take in fuel, oxygen, we get energy, we blow out carbon dioxide and water vapor. But most we have incomplete combustion so, but we strive to get the best combustion that we can. Now with incomplete combustion we get the fuel which is a hydrocarbon here in this case we have oxygen, we get energy, we have carbon dioxide produced, we have carbon monoxide produced which is a very deadly gas and dangerous gas, water vapour plus soot or carbon. Now these are the two issues that create problems for us. Carbon monoxide because it's highly dangerous and, and soot because it comes in here and it builds up in the burner and it creates problems in the heater. Okay, when you buy these heaters, um, they'll come with something like this. This is an air intake silencer. Now, people confuse it and they think it's a filter. No, it's not a filter, it's an actual silencer. So, are they any good? Well, we'll start the unit up and um, we'll try it out. All right, I'll come back in a minute when uh, the unit's all fired up and working. Okay, we're back. Now, in the kit, you'll often get a um, one of these. This is a an intake silencer. It's not a filter. So what they've got is they've got a um, a baffled part here where the air comes in and around and down the side here, and then it flows through the middle here. And inside here, there's some foam, which was acting as a noise absorbent. But anyway, let's see how they perform. So currently, without me talking, it's about 73, 74 decibels. And let's see what happens when we put the, um, the, the intake silencer in. Wow. <laughs> Well, as you can see, they're not much good as a silencer and they're not good as a filter. All right, back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Now, I've spoken in um, previous videos about the need to do all you can to restrict uh, or to, to stop any restrictions in the air coming in here. Now, the reason for that is, is that this is the combustion chamber in here the inlet air comes out he here, it gets burned in the combustion chamber in here, and the exhaust comes out here. Now, the only method of, of sucking air into this inlet is the little fan. So you've got a fan both ends. This, this side here blows it over the, um, the heat exchanger and gives you the hot air. This fan here is what sucks in the inlet air for the combustion chamber. Now, it's a it's a non-positive displacement, it's just a fan, it's not like the pistons in a, in a motor car which actually seal and pull the air in. And this fan at maximum runs around 4000 RPM. Now consider that with a turbo. A turbo will run 200,000 RPM or more, you know, over 50 times faster than this. So any restrictions 
that you have on the inlet air is going to restrict the oxygen coming into here, which is going to restrict the burn in the in the burn chamber here, which is going to create smoke and it crea going to create soot, and you'll get soot built up in here. Now, we've already seen that um, these little so-called um, intake silences are not so good. And the reason they make more noise is because of all the restrictions in here. So the, the air has got to come up and around and back before it goes in here. Now, if you wanted to, probably you could take that off and just use it like that and, and get rid of this part and you would create less restrictions and you'd get um, less noise. But you need a filter and these are not a filter. Now, the reason you need a filter is that When the air comes in and you first start the combustion, it comes in here. This is the fuel coming in here. So every single bit of air to start combustion has to go through this little hole here. And it's about four millimeter diameter, about 3 16th of an inch. And if you suck a fly in, a bee or a, a beetle or anything, and it gets stuck in there, a bit of wing or anything gets stuck in there, this heater will not light because it, the air must go in through here, this is the glow plug here, must go in through here to start combustion. Now once the burner is burning, then the air will come in through here. But the initial start of the burner is through this tiny little hole. Okay, so we have to have a filter in there, in the line. Now some kits come with an air intake filter um, otherwise you can buy one online like this one here about ten dollars or you can go to a hardware store or a plumbing store and you can buy one like this now this has got a nice big surface area so it's going to have a lot less restriction in the air it's got a lovely stainless steel screen and then you can buy different adapters um, to put it into the the hose so if you want you use the normal hose that comes with it you can put this adapter if you want to put a bigger hose you can use this or you can make up you know the different types but you really have to have some sort of filter on the air intake into this combustion chamber you don't want bugs or um, um, bees ants or anything coming in here now if you're in a dirty area um, with a lot of dust or perhaps you use the, the heater while you're, you're traveling on dirt roads or something like that then you have to have a, a, a good intake filter like this one now you can this is a um, one for motorbikes you can buy this at a motorbike store it's got a nice foam air intake filter here you can get different diameters here so you can put it onto different hose sizes but whether you use this type or this type is purely up to you and the actual operating environment that you'll be using the heater in. The um, next thing I'd like to talk about is the hose. The heaters come with an aluminium, um, I suppose, corrugated hose like this. It's got an inside diameter about 24 millimeters, so roughly, roughly about an inch. And it comes with about or 500 millimeter length. Now this is easily crushed. It's it's um, you can squash it, you can hook it, you can bend it quite easily and create restrictions in it. Now there are limitations on how long this hose can be and the number of kinks in it. And the best place to go to that is on the Eberspacher site. Now as these heaters are uh, almost an identical knockoff of the of the German Eberspacher. If you go to the German Eberspacher maintenance manuals and their website and look at what they say about the hose lengths and you, they are a good system to follow. Now, on the Eberspacher site, it's got the, a maximum hose length here of two meters. But in practice, I found if you really go with that 25 millimeter hose, more than about 500 millimeters, then you will start to have troubles with the heater, particularly if you put a small filter in it or you use one of those intake silencers. Now further on from that, 
EBIS batches say that the maximum number of bends in that hose must be no more than 270 degrees. Now, I've seen a number of setups like this. So the heater's in the caravan or motorhome, through the floor, comes through a 90 degrees, here is a beam. They want it nice and tidy, so it goes up and around the beam and back in, and then long, and then through an intake silencer. Sometimes I'll put another 90 degree down in here. So look what you've got. You've got, by the time you get here, you've exceeded the 270 degree maximum. And you've added in all these other 90 degrees and then you put this intake silencer which creates uh, a lot of restriction in the flow of air. You're running a long length of hose here and then people wonder why their, their heater is not working properly. So really, my opinion, if you go longer, not two meters, but longer than about 500 millimeters, then you really should go bigger in hose size. Now, how do we do that? Well, we can't put a bigger hose on here because there's heat here, but there are a number of ways it could be done. And with a little bit of um, thought and planning, um, you can use a copper U-bend and put it in there. Now that's almost a good fit. What you do here is you put some cuts in here with a hacksaw. So you run around here with a hacksaw, you put a bit of silicon gasket sealant on it and you put a hose clamp on there and you can clamp that up really tight. You can use all different types. Um, you know, you can put something like this. You can get a different size um, a tube and everything. So you can put it over here. So then you can upgrade the, the actual intake hose. Now, 25 millimeter, in my opinion, is, is too small, anything more than about 500 millimeters. So if you go up to 30 odd millimeters or 32 millimeters, so this is a really good size. Now, I prefer this type of hose. This is, this is um, I suppose you get this from a plumbing store. This would be called a sullage hose. It can bend in, in um, all different directions, so it's, it's a good hose, it'll, it'll bend very easily, but you've got a few corrugations in it. This one here will also bend, but nowhere near as much, and it's smooth bore on the inside, corrugated on the outside. But either one of these has to be far better than this here. So by increasing the size of the intake hose, you're reducing the, the restrictions in the hose, and you're allowing more air into the burner chamber. Now, you can make up all your own little adapters, so, and then that, now this becomes a tight fit. Um, you can, um, with your filters, as I said, you can buy one of these for a couple of dollars off um, a plumbing store or a hardware store. You can buy all the different adapters to put in, so you can put, you know, for a smaller hose, bigger hose, um, you can get in here, you can put different tube sizes in here. You could actually make an intake and probably run a, uh, you know, a 32, 40 millimeter um, poly pipe hose intake and that would allow plenty of air to get in. So you could run a nice big size hose to here and then re re uh, reduce it down to go into the heater. Right. I can't um, express enough how important it is to reduce the restriction of the air coming into here. So everything that you can do to allow free air into this chamber, including putting on a larger intake hose, you will definitely improve the operation of this heater. Okay, well I hope that gives you some uh, little <laughs> room for thought and, uh, and planning. And thanks for watching.